Hey guys, Richard from The Plain Bagel here. You've probably seen the headlines that the time that was foretold has come. The prophecy is coming true and inflation has arrived. If you've been following the US economy, you know that we saw the consumer price index jump 4.2% in April and 5% in May, which is the highest level it's, it's increased in nearly 13 years since around the financial crisis. Now, importantly, this is price inflation. We have already seen kind of money supply inflation throughout the pandemic, but price inflation is usually where people start to care more about it because it's, it's when it's actually impacting the prices that you pay for goods. It's when it's impacting the consumer which is obviously bad for them. If you're someone who's saving your money, who's sitting on cash, that money is going to be worth less and less the higher the inflation rate goes because you know it's going to be able to buy fewer and fewer goods, which effectively deteriorates your wealth. But how does inflation impact stock mm -hmm. prices? Because traditionally, stocks have actually been presented as an inflation hedge. You know, something that as inflation rates rise, it should see its nominal return increase as well so that your real rate of return kind of stays stable. Uh, in theory anyway. And, and when you think about the reasoning, it, it makes sense because you know, as prices rise, companies, yes, will see higher costs for their, for their production, but they will likewise see higher revenues you know, as they're able to charge higher prices, assuming that inflation sort of more broad based and, and spread out. But does this hold up to reality? Is this what we actually see when inflation rates rise? Well, it's kind of complicated. It's actually a topic that's been researched pretty heavily over time with some research papers pointing to different conclusions about how inflation impacts the stock market. And I kind of want to go over this video for that reason, not only because it's interesting, but because you know, with all these headlines and some of the more doomsday posts you can find online, it's very easy to get caught up in the fear of the market and to make a rash decision that will you know, impact your portfolio's performance. And my hope is to kind of give more caveats of information so that you're fully informed on the topic. Because yes, inflation is something that should be taken seriously. We have indeed seen many times in, the, in over history of countries being brought to their knees by inflation. But at the same time, you know, there are important details when it comes to stock investing that should be understood. And I think by going through this topic together, I can better explain the situation so that uh, you don't <laughs> sell all your, your stocks and, and buy shelter, some canned mm -hmm. foods, and uh, an island off, off the coast to, to wait things out. Because I think... Uh, I think that would be unnecessary for now anyway. <laughs> so let's start it off by explaining the current bout of inflation that we're seeing in the markets. As you probably know, inflation is often described as too much money chasing too few goods. And we kind of saw both of those factors come into play in the pandemic. Uh, on the you know, demand side of things, we had monetary and fiscal stimulus enacted to support people through the, through the lockdowns. You know, we had money supply increase and checks being sent to people to support them. We also saw this sort of delay of demand for certain products with the lockdown. People weren't able to take vacations and they weren't able to spend in certain areas because they, they physically could not. And now as things reopen, there is a likelihood that we'll see an influx into certain industries and that could have an inflation impact. And on the supply side of things, you know, we saw a lot of supply chain disruptions with the lockdowns. You know, transportation was, was restricted, certain borders were shut, and you know, with some manufacturing facilities being closed down, that obviously would have sort of a, an impact further down the supply chain in many industries. Now, inflation is often presented as a sort of neat average figure the truth is that it impacts different industries differently. For example, the 4.2% figure that we saw, a third of that difference resulted from higher <laughs> used car sales. So that's a very specific area that's having a big impact on that average. And likewise, while a lot of reports focus on the consumer price index, it is just one measure of inflation and, and has its own limitations. There are other measures like the producer price index that actually increased by a higher amount over those two months. So, you know, you can see that inflation isn't really broad based in you know, even throughout different industries, it's sort of, it's concentrated in some areas and, and less so in, in other industries. But regardless, any inflation can be disruptive to the economy. And this is the highest rate we've seen in, you know, nearly 13 years. Um, although we have kind of seen sort of mixed messaging about, you know, the severity of the situation. We have seen kind of the official stance that this is transitory, that, you know, we've had the federal chair, Jerome Powell, and the treasury secretary in the US, Janet Yellen, both saying that, you know, this is something that's simply resulting from the economy shutdown and demand being brought forward that will pass. You know, this higher inflation will ease as things return back to normal. And there is some evidence that that could be the case. You know, if you look at trend lines, for example, 
Um, it does seem that inflation you know, dipped down to very low levels during the pandemic and that this could simply be uh, returning to the trend line. On the other hand, we do have a lot of people concerned that this could be a sign that the economy is overheating, that perhaps the stimulus that we saw was too much and that this might just be sort of the beginning of the snowball effect of inflation that we might see with the economy. So what does this inflation mean for the stock market? Well, it's tough to say, you know, it's still early days. We did see an initial negative reaction, but in June when the numbers came in higher still, the markets didn't really move. In longer term, it's difficult to know, you know, what the impact will be. Because if this truly is temporary, we likely won't see a, a meaningful impact from such a short bout of inflation. So it's, it's tough to draw conclusions over such a short time period when we haven't really seen everything play out. To better understand the relationship between inflation and stock prices, really the best thing we can do is look historically, look at the past and, and see what happened. And some research papers have kind of come to conflicting conclusions about the relationship here. As an example, there's one paper by the Institute of Research Advances titled An Analytical Study of the Effects of Inflation on Stock Market Returns that found that different stock markets within different countries had different relationships. But in the US, a rise in inflation rate was shown to have a negative relationship to real stock returns in a 1982 paper titled Inflation in the Stock Market, with the author focusing their research on the 1970s, which is one of the most widely referenced periods of high inflation in the US. From 1969 to 1981, the average rate of inflation was 7.8% in the US, which easily outpaced stock market returns. Meaning that while you know, the dollar amount of your portfolio was increasing, the real value of that portfolio had declined. You were actually losing money by investing in the stock market. And while there are a number of reasons why inflation has this negative impact on stock returns, even though companies are able to charge higher prices, there are three I wanna highlight that explain it really well in my opinion. And as you'll see, these factors impact different types of companies differently. And we'll touch on you know, the types of stocks that will likely suffer more heavily during a high inflationary period. First of all, companies can simply become pessimistic during high inflationary periods. The truth is that inflation is messy. It impacts different areas differently and can really distort operations for a business. Uh, there are friction costs that come with, you know, kind of changing prices and things like that. It distorts debt arrangements. And, you know, there is, of course, this higher uncertainty for the business that perhaps their input costs will increase faster than their output costs. Even though that might not occur, there's more uncertainty when inflation is more volatile. So for many businesses, this can make them more pessimistic and less willing to expand, to hire in more employees, and to possibly pursue more aggressive projects, which can therefore impact their stock returns as they pursue growth less aggressively. Secondly, as we kind of mentioned earlier, holding all else constant, inflation has a negative impact on investment returns. You know, we have that relationship where you take your nominal return and you take out the inflation rate to get your real return. So if you hold, you know, the variables constant, higher inflation is, is usually bad. And this is especially true for dividend stocks. You know, a lot of investors buy dividend stocks for their yield, for the percentage uh, dividend they pay out relative to the stock price. So when that yield is say 4% and inflation rises to two or three or 4%, it becomes less valuable. You know, all of a sudden, you're not really making any money from that dividend yield. So investors who buy stocks just for that yield are going to sell out of the area if that yield doesn't adjust to accommodate for inflation rates. And the truth is that many companies take time to increase their dividends to match inflation rates, and, and some don't. You know, some hold their dividend constant, uh, which can, you know, lead to that outflow of money from the dividend space. Finally, the third reason why inflation can have a negative impact on stock returns is that it's often seen as a precursor for higher interest rates. Interest rates are often used as a way to control and, and cool down an overheating economy, and also to preserve the value of a currency. You know, if we see inflation rising too rapidly, the central bank will often step in and increase interest rates to cool things down. Now, higher interest rates can have a mixed impact on certain companies. There are some financial companies that, that benefit when interest rates rise, but for the most part, it tends to be a damper on, on stock returns because when you think about it, it's essentially leading to more costs for companies. If a company borrows money uh, you know, to, to finance certain projects, all of a sudden that money that they're borrowing becomes more expensive. On top of this, higher interest rates can make stocks less attractive for investors, which can lead some to sell off in the area. 
Uh, and this can sort of be explained through the discounted cash flow model. Without going into too much detail, the discounted cash flow model essentially values a company by taking future cash flows that are expected and discounting them at a certain rate to give them a present value that you can use to say, okay, this company is worth this dollar amount today based on the future expectations we have for this firm. But the rate you discount these cash flows at moves with interest rates. So when interest rates rise, it discounts these cash flows by a larger amount which makes the present value of the company lower for those same cash flows. And it's sort of the reason why we see growth stocks more heavily impacted by higher inflation rates. Growth stocks derive a lot of their value from those future cash flows. So when you have this relationship where inflation can lead to higher interest rates, which can lead to heavily, more heavily discounted future cash flows, then it decreases the value of those growthier stocks that are relying more on their future projections. So, Based on all that we've covered, it seems pretty clear cut that inflation has a negative impact on stock returns. But there is one important caveat that's worth mentioning that I think puts it into a better perspective. And I think will prevent you from perhaps selling your whole portfolio and, and putting everything into precious metals. Uh, because it does appear that to some degree, stocks are an inflation hedge. Now I know what you're thinking, Richard, that sounds stupid. Mm -hmm. You literally just spent the past uh, 10 minutes saying the exact opposite. And yes, <laughs> I understand that. But the thing that's worth mentioning is when we look historically, companies have actually you know, seen their profits adjust for inflation, like we might've expected, at least in the 1970s, that period that's often referenced uh, for research because it had such high inflation. During the 1970s, while yes, we did see the real return of stocks decline, we did actually see the profits of companies grow in line with inflation, meaning that the underlying businesses were at the very least maintaining their current level of profitability in real terms. But the reason that we saw a negative real return was that over the same time period, the valuation applied to stocks declined dramatically. We saw the cyclically adjusted PE ratio fall nearly two thirds over this time period. Um, now for some people that might not mean much, <laughs> but essentially what it means is that investors were just more pessimistic about stocks. So per dollar of profit from the company, they may be used to pay $10 per dollar of annual profit from the company. Now they're only paying $5. You can sort of think of it as someone wanting to pay $500,000 for a house one year, but then the next year they're only willing to pay 400,000 because maybe they're more nervous. They don't want to risk as much money, even though the house itself hasn't changed. Now, that's not to say that the pessimism wasn't perhaps justified. With flat real profit growth, a discounted cash flow model is going to deem a stock less valuable. But the reason it's important to highlight that companies were in fact maintaining their current level of profitability is that once a high inflation subsided, the valuations normalized, which earned investors above average returns over the next decade, over the 80s. So what does this mean for the current situation that we're in? Well, it's impossible to predict the future. On one hand, this could all be temporary, in which case we don't really have to worry about it. But on the other hand, we are starting things off in a pretty high valuation environment where there's a lot of room for a downside correction. And if we do end up seeing longer term inflation, it does appear that it would stint company growth, which sucks. But hopefully I've demonstrated that over the long term, as in you know 10 years and longer, things do seem to even out. Stock returns do tend to make up for lost time. So hopefully this is enough to give you a bit more, you know, solace with the current environment that we're in. With all the headlines and, and news you might see about high inflation eating away at your returns. Yes, it's an important thing that we need to be diligent about and we need to watch these variables. But at the same time, you know, it's not a reason to jump ship. Um, it really isn't. It probably seems appealing to try and time the market and maybe switch your money into gold and things like that. But it's really tough to time the market as, as we've seen before and it tends to be that the moment you switch all your assets over is when you miss out on the big returns of the stock market. So generally speaking, you know, it's good to stay in the high quality businesses that you know will continue to grow during even inflationary periods and to just have faith in the fact that those companies will likely continue to grow and long term so will the money that you've put into them. So hopefully there's been value added in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did make sure to like subscribe all that good stuff and let me know your thoughts down below you know is this something that you're taking uh seriously or that you're not too concerned about uh with the inflation news that we've seen thank you for joining me today and as always be safe out there